in the heart of the Philippines, amidst the hustle and bustle of the urban life. One name stood out in the world of technology and electronics, CDR King. From its humble beginnings to its meteoric rise, this is the story of a company that captured the imagination of a nation, only to face a dramatic downfall. Founded by Nico Son Santos and Henry Ngo, the original CDR King was a small store in Paterno Street that initially sold CDRs back when it was the preferred mode of data storage. CDR lies in its commitment to affordability and variety. From cables to peripherals and gadgets to accessories, CDR King offers a wide range of products at prices significantly lower than its competitors. Of course, it quickly gained popularity for its wide range of electronic products at rock bottom prices. The company's strategy of importing inexpensive goods from China and selling them at competitive rates struck a chord with Filipino consumers hungry for affordable technology. Tandaan ko pa sa ito, una-una pagbukas ang CDR King sa Rojas. Daw nagmagda na mong kabuhi, kahit te, ako da mahilig sa music. Kahit sila din nagdala sa MP3 music player dari. CDR King's expansion was rapid, with new branches popping up in malls, markets, and street corners across the country. Its iconic yellow and blue logo became synonymous with affordable technology. Sang nag-open pagidang si DR King sa Robinson sa February 13, 2014. Tumuda mo tao sa una sang store pati nagasaka ka na o sa escalator na budlayan na. Nasadyahan lang ito ko panong dom tuntukod. The company's success seemed unstoppable with a growing customer base and an ever-expanding product lineup, CDR King was the undisputed king of tech retail in the Philippines. But every empire has its Achilles heel. For CDR King, it was a combination of factors that led to its downfall. The rise of e-commerce giants, changing consumer preferences, and concerns over product quality all contributed to the company's decline. Na-feel ko nga daw pang pante na ang kumpanya. Wala kami nakakick up sa mga nagalain na gusto sa mga mga customers. Kadali lang din sa inoras bago naglala ang mga track sa sistema. CDR King was slow to adapt to the digital age. While online retailers were offering convenience and competitive pricing, CDR King remained silent and reliant on its brick and mortar stores, failing to capitalize on the e-commerce boom. Despite its once prominent position in the market, CDR King faced a rapid decline. Store closures, mounting debts, and legal battles became the new reality for the company. Sa bad business decisions, Gidya, pinakadako gida ang pinabuang ng expand sa branches na without any conducting thorough market research. From a high of 500 stores, CDR King currently has less than 10 branches, according to a source from an official leasing department of one of the country's major shopping malls. The source says that CDR King is still operational but has closed down several other branches in the same mall network even before the onset of the coronavirus pandemic. And as far as the source knows, the company has also undergone a change of ownership. If I were the CEO of CDR King during its final days, I would have taken decisive action to save the company. First and foremost, I would have invested heavily in digital transformation, transitioning CDR King into a robust e-commerce platform to compete with online retailers. Furthermore, I would have prioritized quality control and customer satisfaction 
addressing concerns over product reliability and after-sales support. By rebuilding trust with customers, CDR King could help regain its competitive edge in the market. While the fate of CDR King remains cautionary tale, its legacy leaves on us a reminder of the importance of adaption and resilience in the ever-changing world of retail. As the industry continues to evolve, one thing is for certain. The rise and fall of CDR King will be remembered as a testament to the power of innovation and the perils of complexity.